Welcome to the first ever YouTube Live that is not live. <laughs> this is taking questions from a YouTube Live that we did a little little bit ago, and we felt bad that we just could not get to all the questions that were submitted, and so we grabbed some of the best ones, and they are here in this video. Yep. All right, Boxam says, before reaching $1,000 per month on my website, how much should I be earning in the months leading up to that? That's good, kind of know what to expect. Yep, absolutely. So the first few months of a website, we basically figure that a website's gonna earn nothing. If it earns a few pennies here and there, great, that's really nice, but we don't expect any earnings. Um, and you're... during that phase, we're not even really trying to monetize because there's no traffic. No, no at that point, we're just focusing on content and, and getting that organic traffic to build up. Um, once we start to get some traffic, then we'll focus a little more on monetization. And in those first couple months of earnings, you're gonna see a month that hits like $5. Mm -hmm. And then the next month might hit like $25, and then you might hit 100, and then like 300 or so. Um, and then it might be 800, and then the next month you're well over 1,000. Mm -hmm. We actually do see that kind of a growth curve really, really commonly, where you go from five, even from like five to 100, to 1,000 in three or four months. Okay, totally right. We see it all the time. Yep. We go 100, 100, 100, bang, and it just that shoots happens up. too. Yep. Um, but I know there are 20 people who just started typing a comment saying, I've been stuck at $20 a month for a year. Um, yep. And there are obviously a lot of things that can cause that, but the most common is you, you've you reached $20 a month at the peak of your traffic. Yeah. What we like to see um, and what we're most often seeing on our websites is we start to earn a little bit of money when just a few of our articles have started ranking. But right. we had a chunk of content that we submitted uh, over a couple months as we were writing the website. And as that new content is also coming up quickly, it really jumps. Now, if you've taken six months to write 30 articles, your hockey stick is gonna look Slower. slow. Because it's spread over One six months One article every month is gonna up. start ranking. But that's not what we do. When no. you and I, every time we have actually done the writing for a site, we're just like, let's do this. And we just take 30, 60 days and we just write until we're blue in the face. And yep. so that's when you see the hockey stick. Yep. She am ready says, should we use AMP? So AMP is accelerated media, uh, media mobile. pages, yeah. mobile pages, sorry. Um, and basically it's a way for, uh, to strip down a lot of the code out of your page so it displays super, super fast. We don't use it though. We don't use it. Um, there, we may reach a point where it makes sense that we really need to. So far it has not been an issue. It hasn't held back our mobile traffic at all, but it does really decrease your ad earnings potential. Um, on mobile, and so we avoid it for now. More people commenting. Uh, we've mentioned this before, and they say, oh no, AMP is compatible with ads. Ads, Yes, but it blocks a lot of the technologies that a premium ad broker would use, and so you just don't get the it same still cuts RPM. out significant ad revenue. I, I'm interested in watching this because the technology is still evolving, um, and so this will change over time. Uh, but so far, every time I see somebody who goes to AMP, they later comment and say, yeah, I disabled it, really cut my earnings. Yep. Unless you're in news. If you're in news, sure. you should do AMP. Okay. Uh, World Citizen event. Is it important to set up one link for Amazon? Yes, sir, it is. <laughs> so this is Amazon's own technology. So when uh, I make a link to the Amazon US store, but you are in the UK, you are in India, you are wherever you are, um, one link will then globalize that traffic so somebody in the UK sees the Amazon UK. It's imperfect because the product isn't always offered in every country, etc but it's the best there is and it's the most compatible. And so, yes, th there's just really no reason not to set it up. But even with one link, you still have to sign up for each of those separate countries' affiliate programs separately. Um, I'm at a, we're at a point with one link now where um, just from my amazon.com login, I can actually now start to see the stats from all of our different, um, mm -hmm. the different country pages we have, but you still have to sign up for each of the countries. Uh, you can't just sign up for one and assume that it's gonna, take them to everywhere. And don't obsess over this, especially if you have low traffic. On all of our websites, I should say this a different way, we don't have any website where more than 10% of the income from Amazon is coming from the combined number of the other countries. Um, 
Amazon in the U.S. is just ubiquitous. Huge. It's everywhere. <laughs> um, and in a lot of countries, it is that way. A lot of people in Canada still order from the Amazon U.S. store. Yeah. And just to get it delivered there, like, Amazon U.S. is just huge. Good to have, but don't feel like, oh, I'm missing out on half my earnings if I don't have this. No. Probably not. Okay. Is blogging is better than jobs? Hands down. Yes. <laughs> Hands are down. <laughs> Absolutely. It is. I prefer what I do now to the jobs that I've worked. Um, yep. Okay. <laughs> There's not much more to say there. Um, Ezekiel says, how long do you think SEO and information website business model is going to be around for, especially with AI, artificial intelligence? Jim, what do you think? Is artificial, is Google going to start writing all of the content on the internet? Siri can't even get me to Walmart reliably. And it doesn't understand at all when I say, call my wife. Like, <laughs> we're so early in yeah. machine learning, in all of this, in for machines to be able to really write in a convincing way like us. Um, it, it's still very, very early. Yep. We're seeing, you know, snippets, but Google is really just grabbing what someone else wrote and putting it there um, and not just actually writing sentences with a machine like, it's still really early in this. You know, yep. eventually, 20 years from now, somebody's gonna look back at this video and be like, <laughs> absolutely, it's gonna change in 20 years. But you're still gonna want a human making YouTube videos and stuff in 20 years. Like, <laughs> yeah, you better be ready to evolve, but my business is not going away. This isn't and a business then, yeah. that's just gonna like die overnight because Google comes out with some new technology. This is going to be something that just slowly evolves over time. Michael Lancaster, is it okay to use Fiverr for paid articles? Well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with Fiverr itself. It's just a matter of who you get to write it. Um, but you might expect a lot of cruddy content there. Uh, but if you find the right person, the fact that you hired them through Fiverr is no big deal. Right. Um, just a matter of finding a good writer. Vibrant Happy Health says, what is a good conversion rate for Amazon Associates? Yeah, this is gonna depend a lot on the products that you're recommending. So a 10% conversion rate is kind of a nice Normal. affiliate product type conversion rate. Um, Amazon, you get decent conversions because people are comfortable ordering on Amazon. But high priced items, items that people are going to research for a while before buying. Um, it's not necessarily hard to get a click, but for somebody to actually then go buy the item right now is, the probability goes down, right? Um, people are more likely to just, more likely to keep researching yeah. or, or research for a long time. And so if you're selling a thousand dollar camera lens or recommending a thousand dollar camera lens, you're going to have a much lower conversion rate on that lens but every conversion turns into a higher sale or you know, you get a bigger commission. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean stay away from high price items. Um, just know that the actual conversion rate is gonna be pretty fluid. All right, Jay says, I always get stuck in finding a niche. Will Project 24 help me narrow my niche and find a relatively good one? I mean, Project 24 has some really great tools to help you find a niche. Uh, we have a full video, it's like the very first day, yeah. uh, walking you through how to select a profitable niche for a website that will be very helpful for you. But if you're always stuck on finding the niche, maybe Project 24 isn't gonna help you at all. Maybe this is something you gotta work out at just being decisive on this. Um, but you know, having the course can give you more confidence in that kind of thing of just yeah. knowing that you're looking at all the factors. The thing with niche selection is you're gonna get better and better at it over time. This is why we advocate planting seeds. We want you to write 30 articles, work on another website. Uh, I mean, you're not always gonna nail it, um, but if you are more on the side of action than than perfection, you're gonna do better. That is that is key. Independent of Project 24, I have talked to many people who, they come to me and they say, here's my niche, and I say, oh, cool, sounds like it, sounds good. Okay, but should I go down this path with it or that path with it? I don't know, you should pick one or the other, but they're, they're actually both good places to start. Mm -hmm. um, start with one and, and build out the content there, and then over time maybe you expand and, and cover the other one too. And, but yeah, go, go get after it. And for the next three months, you know, I'll hear back from somebody you know, months later and they say, I just couldn't settle on it. I couldn't figure out which one was better. Mm -hmm. I say, you could have written about literally anything in the world 
and you would be further along now than you were, yeah. than you are now because you did nothing. Err on the side of action over perfection. Okay, Sesha Ravi says, do you have any article on website security making a website hack proof? WordPress is very secure. It has been around for a long time. Uh, there are millions of websites running WordPress. Um, if there were a major vulnerability, they would patch it. The problems are your plugin and your host. Those are the two areas where it can become less secure. Well, maybe we add something obvious to like your password. Um, <laughs> if your password is password, you might be in trouble. Yeah, really. Um, so for your host, pick a big one. Um, that, that's how you know you're gonna do the best on security. If you go with a Bluehost, a SiteGround, a WP Engine, th these companies have multiple successful seasoned engineers that are just working on the security of the hosts. Yep. You go with Bob's server in his closet and you don't know what you got there. Um, and so you wanna make sure you're going with a big company because they are going to one, be the ones who have invested in this type of thing. Now, plugins. Pick ones that are updated regularly. And as soon as you start noticing plug or bugs in a plugin, do not give them a second chance. Yep. Out of here. They will cause further problems. I can't tell you how many times I was like, ah, little bug, whatever, it's okay. Go with it. And then it's like, oh crap, something else yeah. happens. Just when you go with really well-maintained plugins. On our new websites, our new niche sites, we're down to like three plugins that we right. actually need. Minimize it. Plugins cause the vast majority of issues Slowness, on WordPress sites. Bugs. Yep. Um, so if you can find a way to minimize your plugins, obviously plugins are great. That's one of the reasons WordPress is awesome um, because they just allow you to do so many different things. But um, again, always go with the the good plugins that have. A lot of installs, they're constantly up to date. And sometimes you'll use a plugin today that three years from now, it's been kind of abandoned by the mm -hmm. owner. It's not getting updated anymore. Maybe they sold it to someone else. You put in, you run the update and the update has malicious code in it now and somebody now has access to your that site. That has happened. So keep yourself up to date on your plugins and make sure that they're the good ones and they're the reputable ones. Um, then we have a comment, hi Jim and Ricky, when recommending a product on Amazon, aren't you afraid it will go off the market in a few years and your articles won't be relevant? To me, that would be kind of like Ford not putting their newest F-150 on their website because a year from now they'll have a new model. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You will probably have to go back every now and then and fix some of your broken Amazon links because uh -huh. the products are gone. But if you never rec, I mean, this isn't just an Amazon thing. Mm -hmm. This is an every, this is a, an affiliate marketing thing. Yeah. Every single product you ever link to could eventually disappear and the link would be a dead link. Yeah. And when you're choosing which products to recommend, this does impact the way that I recommend sure. things. I'm going to want to look for one that has a thousand reviews. Uh -huh. uh, that's probably not going to disappear from Amazon next year because uh, I don't want a bad user experience of six months from now that weird widget is no longer for sale. Right. You don't want to be, and you don't want to be having to update every link on all of your websites, like check and update them every three months. You don't want to have to deal with that. Mm -hmm. So just pick products that have been around a while and that are longer lasting products. Thanks everybody for joining us in this not YouTube live, but we appreciate your questions and all your support. When you're ready to get started with your website, go to incomeschool.com slash project24 to get our step-by-step -step approach to building a website successfully. We get a lot of questions about project24. Should I get this? Should I not get this? You know what? You can absolutely build a successful site without a course and learn tons from our YouTube channel but we put everything into that course. We put so much effort into making sure that everybody in there um, has the very best experience we yep. can possibly give them. We've taken 10 years of mistakes that we have made in learning things the slow, hard, painful way, and we're giving it to you so that you can make much faster progress.